Welcome to RCLJ's episode 29. I'm Luke. I'm Lauren. We're at Chelsea Book Stadium. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Right, so today we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. Yeah. Lawrence, kick us off. So, intermittent fasting. Um, become kind of a bit of a buzzword. Uh, you will see YouTube videos about nutrition littered with comments saying, oh, you should try intermittent fasting. Straight off the bat, everyone, provided you don't wake up in the middle of the night and get some food, does some form of intermittent fasting already. Like sleeping. Yeah, it's just intermittent fasting is simply going a period of time intermittently, that's the name, without eating anything, i.e. fasting. If you're uh, Muslim, then you will do this periodically anyway during Ramadan. Um, but it's just, it's just a period of time without eating. But people have kind of systemized it uh, into two main camps, if you like, uh, certainly within the fitness industry. One is um, alternate day fasting and what alternate day fasting is is going for around about 24 hour, hours without eating food and then the next day having a feast day as it's called in the, the literature there's actually quite a lot of scientific literature out there on the effects of alternate day fasting so it'll generally flip between you eat nothing for 24 hours um, and then you eat whatever you want the next day there's no inherent um, calorie or macro tracking in the literature on the feasting day, you just eat out of it. Uh, and then the other one, which hasn't got um, any literature, I don't think, surrounding it as a concept, um, is the one popularised by one Martin Birkin um, on leangames.com, uh, which is 16 8 fasting. So that is, you fast for 16 hours within every 24 hour period, you eat all of your food within an eight hour feeding window. So that, in a nutshell, is intermittent fasting. As a concept, you just go some periods of time without eating, but within the fitness industry, there are two main camps as fucking ever in the fitness industry. People love tribes, people split themselves off into these little things, you either IF or you don't IF, or you do this IF or whatever else, and it gets kind of boring. But that's it, intermittent fasting in a nutshell. My name's Luke and I intermittent fast. I feel like a weight off my shoulders has been released. But that's the thing with like the fitness industry. It tends to be like either IF and people are like yes, or people are like low carb, high carb, paleo, clean eating, if it fits your macros. It's just a strategy. Yeah. And at the end of the day, most of the diets will have one common theme, especially when we're looking at fat loss or weight loss is that they will either eliminate foods or they will put boundaries in so you can only eat during a certain period of time. And as a result of that, you end up eating less calories than you were previously. And then guess what? Everyone thinks intermittent fasting is magic because they started it and it meant that they ate less calories. And as a result of it, they got lean, shredded, whatever. Now, if you're, like you should never marry one approach, especially if you're a personal trainer, which hopefully most of you watching this are, I do it in the fasting some days, I don't do it other days. The reason why I do it is because in the morning, I'm my most productive. So I don't want to be prepping food or eating stuff or, or spending any time doing that. I just literally want to get on with work and I will eat around 12 o'clock, one o'clock, maybe a little bit later. And what that enables me to do is to not get morbidly obese, just be around 18, 20% body fat. Currently, I'm not going to sell 15%. And I'm not going to give you an average shot, but it just gives me a structure to allow me to eat more in the evening because I like to eat more in the evening. Now, again, there's research on it. We can't pull it up right now. Pretty much, if you're going to look at the research, do it yourself. Um, we can't cite all the studies, but there are benefits to intermittent fasting. There's benefits to most approaches, like health markers being improved. But intermittent fasting is nothing magic. Um, it's a, it's a 
it's a strategy you can incorporate and if it works well for you, then good. Some people like intermittent fasting, whether it works well for muscle gain. Again, it depends what your, if your alternate day, 16, eight or whatever it is. Yeah. If we're looking at that and we're trying to hypothetically, because I don't, it's not much, is there any research showing that an intermittent fasting with all the calories matched, macros matched, compared to someone who's not intermittent fasting and four or five meals? No, there's so. no research. I mean, I'm yet to fully make my mind up on the whole muscle gain thing. Um, I, my first like, thoughts when I initially heard about it were it probably doesn't matter. It's not um, optimal. My it's second good. thoughts were that uh, more towards the whole protein dosing issue in mm. that you are going a period of time without protein um, and we know that the ingestion of protein along with resistance training is a, the, kind of the biggest anabolic stimulus you can really give your body outside of um, drugs yeah. um, but having listened to it was Danny Levin's podcast when he had uh, Sigma it, Nutrition Sigma Nutrition Radio check it out he had a a protein researcher on that recently I can't for the life of me remember the name which is really irritating but um, he highlighted and this was something I did know i just forgot about that when it comes to protein dosing we know that for example three two, two doses is better than one when it comes to, to muscle gain. We know that. Um, we know that three is better than one. There was a study that looked at um, equal protein dosing, so three 30 gram doses versus two 15 gram doses and a 60 gram dose, six zero. Uh, and the spread pattern, so three 30 gram doses beat out 60 gram one in the evening when it came to any muscle protein synthesis, I don't think they looked at long term muscle gain. So we don't, few, know, we don't know whether three is better than two, we don't know whether four is better than three, all the rest of this. So at that point, it kind of becomes more of a, uh, a hypothetical situation. If you personally think that not adopting a fasting approach is going to help you build more muscle and it is convenient, it helps for you get the to, calories in. Yeah, and it is convenient for you to spread your food around more equally or more evenly across the day, go for it. Equally, if you believe the intermittent fasting approach works absolutely fine for muscle gain and you are, um, it's more convenient for you to spread your food less evenly across the day, then do that. I mean, at the moment, I don't think we can say with any great degree of certainty that one is definitely better than the other in terms of muscle gain. For fat loss, it's largely an adherence issue. And again, it's like Eric Helms' pyramids, because he loves yeah. pyramids. It's about getting big rocks in place first. So if you're intermittent fasting, then that means that you're over, let's look at muscle gain, your overall calories are not enough to be putting on natural body weight and muscle, then it's not going to be optimal, which would be exactly the same if you wasn't intermittent fasting, having six meals a day, but you still were under the calories and not having sufficient protein, calories, etc. So get your big rocks in place first, and then go with an approach that suits you best in your lifestyle. That's, and that's what happens all the time. The research will come out, and even if it says low carb was better than high carb by one kilogram a year in regards to losing weight. But if you went on that low carb approach and you couldn't sustain it, then it's not gonna be the best approach for you. Remember, we're not subjects in a study in a metabolic uh, ward being fed and, to, and telling us what to do. We live normal lives and have life stresses. So go with an approach that works best for you and focus on the big box first and then adapt your approach based on your current life. Major key. Thank you, you've enjoyed the Chelsea Stanford Bridge edition. If you haven't got your ticket yet for 3DMJ conference and you are in the UK, Europe is maybe a little bit late now, but if you are in the UK, then tickets are still available go to shreddedbyscience.com slash 3dmj if you're a team SBS member watching this how come you haven't got a ticket already or 3dmj member because you can get it for £49 rather than £69 but to be fair both stupidly cheap they are take care